today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite topics and that is fishing reels. Now this here is your traditional bait casting fishing reel, low profile reel. This is the rod and reel setup that I use on about 80% of all bass fishing. I have friends all the time call me up and say, hey, I, I want to buy a new rod and reel. What do you recommend? And this is what I'm typically going to recommend if you're not pan fishing. A lot of my friends say, hey, I only throw a spinning reel. And every time I've ever tried to throw a bait caster, I've had nothing but problems. What I'm telling you is if you match your rod, your reel, your line, and your lure weight, and they all match, these can be highly, highly efficient tools and you get way more control out of throwing a bait caster than you can ever get out of throwing a spinning reel. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of that later. But first off, if you're just getting into bass fishing or you've been bass fishing and you don't use a bait caster and you're thinking about picking one up, I would go with a six foot six medium to medium heavy rod and I'd, I'd err to the lighter end of that and make sure that when you read the rod, it will tell you what weight lure and what weight line to throw on it and it'll give you a range. This particular one here says 5 16 ounce lure to 3 quarters of an ounce. All right, I'm throwing a 5 16 ounce, ounce jig right here. It will also tell you the pound test. This says 14 to 20 pound test. On a medium weight rod, this is medium heavy, you're going to get somewhere between 8 to 16 pound. Throw the lightest line that you can to learn how to cast one of these. You'll get more distance and they're easier to throw. Also recommend, I love throwing fluorocarbon line in a situation like this where it's all about touch and feel, but learn how to throw a bait caster using monofilament. It's easier to throw and when you get a bird's nest and you have to take that line out, it's not as hard on your pocketbook. So once you get that set up, there are really two things that two levels of adjustment on these reels other than your drag. And the first one is called your cast control knob. Every single reel manufacturer will have a knob on there that's called your cast control. And it's usually set right here by the crank, real close to the drag. What you wanna do is tighten this knob down and then push the button on your reel to allow the line to spool out freely. And as you can see, it's locked down. That is not going anywhere. Once you get it set that, to that point right there, you wanna start opening it up until the, until the bait starts to fall with a bit of a stop and start motion. That means that your reel is now set where you want it to be set. Now, as you become more proficient throwing a bait caster, you may find that you wanna really open it up and make it really loose and do what they call feathering the line. You're still gonna have to feather it when you cast it like this, but you can get more distance by throwing it, casting the rod and, a, and putting your thumb on the line and putting a little bit of tension on it. The second level of adjustment on these reels is called your brake control. And they are located in different areas depending on the brand and the model of reel you're throwing. This one is right here on the bottom and it has numbers one through five. Five meaning it's putting the most tension and it, it will reduce your backlashes, but it will also reduce your casting distance one being almost completely free. And you'll find those located in different areas and I'll showcase that here in a little bit. So now I've got my reel set up. We're about ready to start making some casts. Now we're gonna demonstrate the five casts that I use most frequently when throwing a bait caster. First off is, you know, the long overhead bomb cast. This is one that you're making in open water. You're trying to make really long casts. Sometimes it might be a crankbait, might be a swim bait, maybe a spinner bait. This is the style of cast that typically you're going to turn the reel over on its side, oh, engage the spool, come straight back over your head, and make a long cast out. Now, as that bait's going out there, you're going to want to keep a little bit of tension on the spool. You can feel the spool spinning under your thumb. And when it gets close to your intended target about where you want to go, right before this water, you just lightly touch it and hold it, and then you'll switch hands and start your retreat. Most important thing, and what I see where a lot of people mess up on this is one of two things. They either don't match their weight to their lure and their line, or when they go to make the cast, they either don't have enough line hanging down or they have too much line hanging down. You're really looking for somewhere in the range of about 18 to 24 inches. If you don't have enough line hanging down, when you go back to cast, you don't have enough force 
to load your rod tip to get the distance. And if you have too much line, when you go back to make a cast, you got this long whipping action. You want that, you want that bait going as fast as it can, pulling line from the spool and not making a big loop. This is about the distance that you're looking for right here. The biggest mistake I see is where people try to cast too close or too far away. This is also, if you're fishing out of a boat, a really good cast to, to know because if you're fishing two or three people side by side, you're always casting straight behind you and straight out. You don't have to worry about hooking someone. Now let's talk about the next cast. The next cast is a sidearm cast. A sidearm cast, you'll see people a lot of times use it off the front of the boat or if they're just fishing two people, you'll see them make this style of a cast. Kind of come through the side and throw that lure right on out there. On this one, you're right, you're, usually your spool is facing straight up and down as opposed to the, to the overhead cast where you tilt it to the side. But other than that, the distance that you're letting the lure hang down is still really important. This is the kind of cast you're just gonna kind of sidearm rip it out there. Exact same thing, I'm feathering it, touching it right when I want it, when I want it to stop to keep from any, any overrun. If I get out in a situation where I'm fishing down a bank and I'm, I'm making somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 yard cast, 30 yard cast, this is the cast that I will use quite often at that point in time. Not quite the distance that I'm getting with the overhead cast, but still really effective cast. For our next cast, I'm gonna to move to the other side of the boat and this is a cast I use quite often if I'm casting over the front side of the boat or if you're fishing from the bank. If you have some trees that are hanging down, this is a really good cast and I call this my underhand roll cast. And this is a cast where you take the rod and you make a loop and you cast it almost on the plane of the water and you cast it out. This is also the cast that I use when I go to docks and I want to skip a bait. This takes a little bit of practice and you got to get your control just right. It's not a way to start, but if you want to roll a cast out there right on the water level and you can literally get the bait to skip right up under a dock, great technique on sunny days for catching largemouth bass. But this underhand roll cast can be really, really effective and it's also a way on a really windy day to keep the bait low to the water and make accurate casts. If I'm throwing a spinner bait on a windy day, a lot of times this is what I'm throwing. An underhand roll cast is very similar. It starts out like an over the head cast, but you literally roll the bait under and you throw it right to your intended target. Let me demonstrate. You can be very accurate throwing this particular technique. And then what I really like about it is if I'm running the trolling motor and we're fishing this way on a bank and I have other people in the boat, I can, I can throw cast all day long right over the nose of the boat and not have to worry about anyone to this side of me. Flipping and pitching is a technique that you're gonna to use to fish very accurately. You wanna cast right into a piece of structure in shallow water and not make a big splash. The first technique is what I use for a little bit longer distance and it's the technique I use the most and it's called pitching. Now with pitching, the lure typically starts in your hand and you will literally bend the rod tip a little bit, load it up, and then essentially from there it's an underhand roll cast. Underhand roll it right to your target, feathering your bait, throw it harder than, it, than you need to get to get the bait there and then you stop it once you're close. I'll show you how to do this. Now one thing that's really important when you're flipping and pitching is as soon as that bait hits the water, change and engage your drag system because a lot of times you're pitching right where you think the fish is there and if it hits as a reaction bite and you go to set the hook before you've engaged your spool and you set the hook, <laughs> you've got yourself a bird's nest. The last cast I wanna show is for the absolute closest, most precise cast and this is called flipping. Now on flipping, you're literally gonna take your take your rod and you're going to pull some line off your spool. You're going to gently lay a bait and on this here you're usually only casting less than 10 feet. So I'm taking this here and I'm going to gently lay it out there and then I'm going to engage my spool and I'm going to work a very specific spot. Maybe it's a stump, maybe it's a stick up. If you are still not convinced that a bait caster is right for you or you've tried one before and you've not had good results, there is some technology out here that you might want to know about. And this is called DC for digital control. 
Now this has a bunch of magnets in there like all the, all the reels do, but what these magnets do is they almost act like an anti-lock braking system on your car. If the spool goes too free, which essentially allows you to get the overrun, this thing will slow it down and will allow you, once you set the, the reel up like we've done all the others, and we wanna add, add the brake, hit the button, let the slow fall, tune this thing back to around one or two, you can start making cast. You don't even have to touch the spool. I know that sounds crazy. I'm gonna demonstrate a cast. I'm gonna throw a 40 yard cast. I'm not gonna to touch the spool in flight, and I'm not gonna to touch the spool when it hits the water. And watch this. Not one loop, zero overrun whatsoever. Again, this technology's been out for about five or six years, but it's just recently been offered in reels that are affordable. Fishing with a bait caster can add so much additional control and accuracy to your lure presentation. If you do not use a bait caster, you really need to think about picking one up and giving it a try.